all the head covering debates. First Corinthians chapter 11, woman in ministry. Verse 10, it shows us that the whole reason why head coverings mattered was because they were a symbol, yep, a symbol of authority. It's important because people use it as a rebuttal for why Christianity is. Ruslan. Pastor Mike Winger dropped a six hour and 45 minute video. It's called uh, All the Head Covering Debates. First Corinthians chapter 11, woman in ministry. I, I love Pastor Mike Winger. We probably agree on a lot of theology, and he lands almost in the exact same place I do with this topic. Um, I encourage you guys to go watch, especially those of you guys that care about this topic, women in ministry. Uh, it's just a very polarizing topic. So I'll just play you guys the intro. So I'm genuinely embarrassed about how long this video ended up being, but don't I don't be think embarrassed, it was very avoidable Mike. considering the goals, which is to answer all the complexity and the debates that go on in this passage. And I try to answer it as succinctly as I could. That being said, I say let's get into it. Um, the head covering stuff, all the debates, all the difficulty, hopefully bringing you confidence and clarity by the end on the topic of head coverings and male and female relationships. That's 1 Corinthians 11. So there's tons of controversy in this passage. There's tons of complicated debates. What is 1 Corinthians 11, 2 through 16? What does it mean for women in ministry? Here's the conclusions. Male headship is a biblical teaching. There's evidence that it relates specifically to authority, right? Verse 3, I'll give several reasons for that. Verse 3 shows us that male headship is a real thing. It's a transcultural reality that applies to all cultures. Video number eight, I deal with male headship and what kephale means. It is just a fact of reality about the sexes. There's no way around it. It particularly applies in marriage, not just in all men have authority over all women or some nonsense like that. Um, number two. Notice that he said, that's nonsense. All men don't have authority over all women, right? Which is sometimes, uh, the, the I would say, the toxic view of this idea of headship. Well, oh, all women. You know, no, no, no. This is specifically in the context of a covenantal marriage, Christian marriage. You know what I mean? Two, creation's order in verses eight and nine also support the idea of male headship. It showed that man was made from, woman was made from man, verse 8, and woman was made for man, verse 9. And we looked at the egalitarian alternative interpretations, and they failed poorly, really badly on those things. They pretend the passage is focused on lust issues or distraction, worship, rather than headship in the created order. Verses 8 and 9 show authority roles between men and women. The whole context of 1 Corinthians 11 fits this, this idea of male headship. In the activity of prayer and prophecy, it's, a, it's important to maintain headship, according to scripture here. While women can and should do ministry, right, while they're doing it, the order of male and female should still be maintained. And that's why eldership issues, there's an eldership requirement for them to be men because we're still trying to maintain this God-given structure of male, female. And I say, we've fallen in two counts in the modern church. We not only don't maintain the order, we've also failed because we don't celebrate it. And that's what scripture's calling us to do. See, it as a wonderful thing. Hmm. Fourth reason why it, it shows uh, male headship is because verse 10, it shows us that the whole reason why head coverings mattered was because they were a symbol, yep, a symbol of authority. Uh, my case doesn't rest on verse 10, but I think it's true. So I think it should be part of it. <clears throat> so head coverings clearly a symbol of authority. That's what they are seen. Although interestingly, verse 10 doesn't argue that head coverings are a symbol of authority. Paul never argues for that. So it's actually very important that we do hold to this complementarian idea of male headship, but it's balanced out. Let's talk about how it's balanced out a little bit. This is why I call myself complementarian and not patriarchal. I've got to have some mm -hmm. term to use to separate me from the, from the abuses and stuff that the Galtrains are rightly complaining about. Sometimes and other times they're exaggerating. Anytime there's power, there's abuse. But this doesn't mean that power itself is wrong. This man is just full of gems, bro. Anytime there's power, there's, an abuse, there's abuse, but that doesn't mean that power in and of itself is wrong. Right, so there's a submission and a yielding and a headship between the father and the son, but in no way does this devalue the son. Does this make the son lesser? Does this make him, like, it, there's no abuse going on here, okay? So that egalitarian uh, push that is very common, very common across most egalitarians I've seen, that all authority difference equals abuse between genders is, is I think, just proven, proven wrong by the relationship of the father and the son. This does not require saying that the son has always been in submission to the father from eternity past. You may hold that view, but it's not required for that, for that position. So submission and yielding are seen in Jesus as a wonderful thing. When he yields to the father, brings glory to him, the head. But in our culture, it's seen as an icky, ugly thing that we should be embarrassed about. Biblically, it's wonderful, and that's something we need to know. That's some of the balance that's being brought. In verses 11 and 12, we read in 1 Corinthians about mutual dependence. Man comes from woman through childbirth, and so men and women have dignity and have importance and have value, and so there should be no devaluing. Okay, this is... This is the thing. I feel like a lot of egalitarians would hear me saying this and they think, I don't mean it. I'm just saying it to placate them. And I would just say, you think too much of yourself at this point. I actually mean it. Um, and scripture means it. Any devaluing, the husband doesn't treat his wife right. It, it, it hinders his prayers before God. The husband's Come called on. to self-sacrificially love his wife as Christ loved the church. Talk about yes. value. Yes. This is a biblical concept here. It's not just something complementarians mouth to placate egalitarians or stop them from claiming abuse and stuff like that. This is something we're supposed yes. to defend and champion because scripture does. Verse 15 <clears throat> says that her hair is her glory. That's an interesting idea. Women are not being devalued here. Her hair is her glory. Feminism, I found that in my own 
observations of feminism, it shames women in many ways for being women, right? Like a woman is suddenly embarrassed to say that she is a stay-at-home mom. She's embarrassed about that. This is obnoxious that she's actually embarrassed about that. Or a woman's ashamed, feels bad, that it feels like she's failed somehow because her husband is the breadwinner for the family. Or like, like as if she was to say in public, well, I'll have to ask my husband about that. And then she'll be like, oh, you're one of those. Oh, you poor, poor <laughs> woman. Oh, you <laughs> poor depressing human being. It's a, you have such a miserable, hopeless life. Like this is the impression you get from modern feminism, to be honest. The Bible suggests that these gender roles are glorious for women. Come on. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with scripture on that one. And until you are celebrating the female role, you have not thought rightly about it. Don't demonize others who are just, maybe they're just wrong on these issues. I mean, the scriptures, you can't pretend that the scripture is just this big puzzle that can never be solved here. Okay, look, it's real consistent. It's yeah. just that um, there's so much noise about it now that people have stopped mm -hmm. noticing it. Sheesh. Mike Winger, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, what a moment, man. But yeah, I think Mike Winger totally nails it on this entire conversation. I'm excited to go through it. Never would have thought to do a, a study on head coverings. Like, I just, my brain just doesn't work that way. But that's a guy that has a different grace over his life where he'll spend a hundred hours preparing for a seven hour video. You know, um, I think videos like that are important because what you'll see a lot of people do, well, not, not let me not even say people because I think the motives of people are actually, I, I, I believe that there's a spirit behind, um, the reason why people are, are antagonistic to Christianity, but they use things like that, like Old Testament rules, mm. and they'll be like, why are you wearing mixed threads? Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, why are you this and this and this, but so-and-so is doing this, and she's a Christian as well, so mm -hmm. you people are hypocrites. And I mean, um, being able to cover something is, I mean, sometimes people won't go into detail mm -hmm. with things like that, but it's important because people use it as a rebuttal for why Christianity is wrong and why it's so confusing. Yep. So I think, yeah, it's a good video. Hey, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see the full extended version of this podcast, be sure to sign up for our Patreon community for only $5 a month. It'll really help us continue contextualizing the gospel using YouTube, media, and podcasting. And in exchange, you will get full unedited versions of the podcast, of our daily after-party streams, a discount for our merch store, and exclusive access to our private Discord server. It's only $5 a month. The link for Patreon is in the description of this video, as well as the pinned comment below. If you're feeling like, yeah, I don't think I want to sign up for $5 a month, that's okay. We also have links in the description of this video where you can make a one-time contribution on Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal, but but we really want to get you over on Patreon. So again, hit the link in the description, sign up now, and I'll see you over there, all right? Peace.